Hi guys. Yeah, I was uh, at home working on the computer yesterday doing something. I had, had the TV on in the other room and Hardball came on. Now I like Hardball. Uh, but and so I'm sort of listening to it while I'm uh, while I'm working and he brings on this guy named Peter Sprigg to explain uh, that don't ask don't tell don't pursue which mean uh, which is it uh, uh, he's up the family research center and I have I had to I had to get a copy of this and post it for you guys to see this I have never seen such a fucking bigot on TV thank you much and I will be posting on this site uh, the link to the to the full segment. Thank you much. Stop. Starbucks is executive director of Service Members Legal Defense Network, and Peter Sprigg is the senior fellow for policy at the Family Research Council. Uh, let me go first to Aubrey. Uh, you served in the military. You were in I the did. army, I and where were you army? stationed? What kind of unit were you in? I was in the infantry. I was in South Korea, Seventh Infantry Division. I was a sharpshooter. And uh, as a gay man, what was it like? You were not in the open, obviously. What was your experience in that in that regard? What did you learn in terms of this issue of whether gay people should be allowed to serve openly? Well, by and large, even in the 60s, Chris, uh, I found that gays and lesbians serving, and most were serving in silence then, it was not a big deal. Uh, but all gays and lesbians want to serve openly. They want to be honest about their service to their country. And as Admiral Mullen said today, it comes down to integrity, and every service member counts, gay or straight. Let me go to Peter. What is the argument uh, against it in terms of actual performance in the barracks, in life, in the military? What gets in the way of military discipline and a crack unit? Your view. Well, Performing as soldiers. Military life is unlike civilian life. Uh, soldiers are put in the positions of forced intimacy all the time. They shower together, they sleep together in the barracks, and it's simply unfair uh, to, to uh, put soldiers in a position of forced cohabitation with those who may be viewing them as a sexual object. That is a, a formula okay, well, guaranteed to lead to greater sexual tension, sexual harassment, and even sexual assault. But my dad was in the military, my brother's in the military, everybody I know has ever been in the military says there are gay people in the military and they're known to be gay. What, what You say we don't want to have a situation where gay people are in forced intimacy with straight people, but isn't that the case now? It's simply not official. Isn't that the case now? Are you saying there are no gay people in the barracks or on submarines or in any other kind of intimate setting, as you put it? Well, to the extent that it is the case now... Uh, well, it is true, isn't it? First of all, let's agree on this. Are you questioning whether there are not sizable numbers of Americans who, are, who have gay orientation, who are gay men and women, who are serving in the military? Did you deny that? There's some significant numbers of them right now. Well, I don't know how sizable or significant the numbers are, but I, I don't? agree that there are some. I thought you were an expert in this field. <laughs> well, I don't no, know. No, you're Obviously, on television know, talking about an area I thought you knew something about. You don't know... There are no polls about what you're talking about. How many about. people are gay in the military? Because if well, they were to admit a significant that, they'd be, they'd I'm not asking for his percentage. Out. Do you deny that, that, that we, in the history of our country, have had an experience of gay men and women serving in the military? A significant experience. It's not new to us. Do you get, acknowledge that? There are people who have experienced homosexual attractions, who serve, have served in the military and do continue to serve in the military, but they are restrained in their behavior by the current policy. If we had a policy where, the, uh, where people were considered bigoted if they were opposed to same-sex conduct, then the, there would be much greater danger of misconduct on the part of the homosexuals and uh, much greater likelihood that people who are object to that would simply choose not to serve at all. Well, Chris, there's no data, there's no evidence to support the assertion that was just made by this gentleman. Well, there is 58% uh, of and, currently serving and, and, members and, and told the military times they here, would not support this. And, and what this gentleman is suggesting and putting out on the table is insulting to, our, to all service members, gay and straight. It's about professionalism. Gay soldiers and sailors are professionals, as are their straight counterparts. At the end of the day, it's about professionalism. It's about getting the mission done. And it's not about 
uh, your sexual preference or orientation. Well, that's exactly the point I'm trying to make. The military should not be used as an avenue for social reengineering. The purpose of the military is to fight and win wars, okay. and we Let, need the force out. that's let's, most effective okay, to you do that. that. You go at it. You go at it. No, no, come on. Uh, the purpose of the military is to defend this country. We need every service member who is qualified to be on active duty today to be defending this country. Their sexual orientation is not a factor. It's about the mission, it's about professionalism, and as Admiral Mullen said today, it's about integrity. No one should have to lie to fight and die for this country. Well, let I, me just try one more time, and Peter, uh, I accept completely your right to make this case. This is an American debate which is very much alive, so I'm not taking sides exactly in this debate, although I do have a position. Let me ask you this. Do you, what should a young woman or man, say 22 years old, out of college, officer material, they want to serve their country, they're, but they're gay. What should they do? They want to serve their country. They're patriotic. What should they do? Well, they should serve it in some civilian capacity and not join the military. Because Why the not? Military's, because the, uh, the presence of homosexuals in the military is incompatible with good order, morale, discipline, and unit cohesion. Well, that's exactly what Congress found in 1993, and that's what again, the law states. Again, there is no data, there is no evidence, there is no study whatsoever that you can point to to support that outrageous statement. I Nothing. think what we have, and, and what I would also suggest to you is that 79% of Americans today support open service. They support gays and lesbians being able to serve their country openly. Indeed, I would say to you that the latest Gallup polling shows that 61% of weekly churchgoers support gays and lesbians being able to serve openly. Indeed, 58% of conservatives support repeal of don't ask, don't tell. So what's your response, sir? Well, uh, don't ask, don't tell is, is the Clinton compromise policy, which is actually incompatible with the law that was passed by Congress. There's almost universal misunderstanding about that. I'd like to see us do away with this uh, don't ask, don't tell and simply enforce the law that was passed well, by so Congress. Well, what I hear you're saying is that you believe that gays and lesbians should not serve their country in the uniform whatsoever. Uh, that's absolutely not only, right. Not only are you opposed to repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell, you would prohibit uh, all gays and lesbians from serving their country. That's right exactly now, right. We're and fighting would... two wars and we need every qualified trooper to be out there. The percentage of people, the, the number who would refuse to serve in the military if they're forced to serve with open homosexuals would dwarf the number of homosexuals no who would actually volunteer fact for to that serve. There assertion. is. There's a Military Times poll which showed that 10% of currently serving military would consider a not re-enlisting if, if the uh, and that's military was open homosexuals. And the readers of the Military Times. Well, that's the it's only indication we have of the views of me, currently let me, let me serving members. Your, uh, let me ask you, uh, Peter. Do you think people choose to be gay? Uh, people do not choose to have same-sex attractions, but they do choose to engage in homosexual conduct. And that's conduct also, which incidentally is... It's against the law within the military. It violates the Uniform Code of Military Justice. It doesn't make any sense for us to be actively recruiting people who are going to violate uh, the Uniform Code of Military Justice. Do you think we should outlaw gay behavior? Well, uh, I think certainly I'm just defensible. asking you, should we outlaw gay behavior? I think that the Supreme Court decision in Lawrence v. Texas, which overturned uh, the sodomy laws in this country, was wrongly decided. I think there would be a place for criminal sanctions against homosexual behavior. So we should outlaw gay behavior? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you very much, Peter Sprig. <laughs> we know your position. It's a clear one. Thank you, Army Service. My friend, I've known this fellow for 30 years.